In this video, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on maddening difficulty and the skip only run I just did. So you can see here, here's the completed save file, which feels really good to look at because as you can see here, the final chapter took me quite a few hours to beat. So let's, let's load it actually. And let's talk about all this stuff. Skip only, what it changes. Was it worth it? Should you try it? Um, all right, so first things first. Let's, we gotta load in, that's, that, that's the first thing. Really, that's the first thing. <laughs> we have to load into the game, I would say. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's load into the game. Let's get this upload started. All right, cool. Okay. So you have to talk about the units. Let's start with the units. Okay, so the units you get are decent. There's definitely some missing things. Uh, your main physical damage dealers are Sylvain, Felix, to some degree Ingrid, uh, aside from your lords, which are insane. Uh, Annette, she's definitely... Hmm, she's definitely the worst mage. So, like, alright, so who are the mages in the game of each house? So, for Golden Deer, you get Lysithia. Lysithia is way better than Annette. She has warp. She has a crazy spell list, and she learns things faster, so she gets range plus one faster. She gets into Gremory sooner if, like, testing into Gremory is an issue. So Lysithia is just way better than that. And then you also have Dorothea. Dorothea has Thoron. She has Meteor. She has Physic. That unit blows Annette way the fuck out of the water. Now, I know, you know, oh, Annette has Rally. Cool. Well, here's the thing. I would rather be killing enemies than Rally. So I know some people swear by Rally, and that's great. But I would rather just be killing shit. I would rather have Meteors. I would rather be able to Meteor a Siege weapon and kill it. I would rather have Physic. I would rather have Thoron. Dude, Thoron early game, three range early game magic? Give me that shit. Give me that. All right, so she's definitely the worst mage. Uh, Ingrid. So let's talk about like the female flyers. The unit that usually goes into Pegasus Knights, uh, Falcon Knight or Wyvern Lord of the females. So Ingrid's kind of like the medium stats thing. So like Ingrid versus Bernie. Bernie is really like Ash, but the thing about Bernie is she makes a fantastic flying unit. And with Vengeance, which is Spears, she's a really good Falcon Knight. So Bernie is a way better Falcon Knight than Ingrid. So she's kind of like the one of the worst ones in terms of that. And then like comparing her to Hilda, Hilda's definitely better. Or Leone, both are way better. They have better growth, so they have better bases um, for like strength and shit. Those are way better. So you basically have like the worst female flyer, the worst, like the worst Falcon Knight, the worst mage. Um, and then I Ignatz versus Bernie versus uh, Ash. Ignatz is way better than Ash. Hit plus 20 is way better. Uh, his, his bases are a little bit better. Uh, his damage, I think his strength is usually a little bit better. And then Bernie's thing, she's supposed to be like the archer, but she ends up just becoming another Falcon Knight. Um, you can make her a Wyvern, but you want Lance Fair to stack with Vengeance, I think. Because why wouldn't you, you know? Um, so you get like some of the worst units. <laughs> you have like three, like Annette's okay, and Ingrid's okay, and Ash is whatever. But you definitely get some of the worst units. Uh, Mercedes, as far as the healers, this is very debatable. Some people swear by Linhart. I don't like that he only gets four move, and then he's, he doesn't become a Gremory. I actually don't care for that. He has fewer spell uses for, like, offensive magic, which does matter. Uh, Mercedes smacks a lot of things. Uh, she also has Fortify. But Warp would be nice, but I wouldn't want it on her. I'd want it on something else. And... Yeah, so those are the units compared to other houses overall. Dimitri, all right, and then for, okay, Dimitri. Uh, I'd say he's a little bit better than Claude, maybe slightly worse than Edelgard. Edelgard's route's also short, so I'd say that's fair, because she has Raging Storm, which is insane. Um, he doesn't have something like that, <laughs> so it puts her a little bit above him, but, you know, shorter route, easier route. Um, okay, so those are, like, the units, and then, like, the dudes that come in, you have Gilbert, Sedith. They're okay, overall. So, okay, so let's talk about why I wanted to do this run, because I think that's 
So, all right, so I like maddening mode, and I find base maddening way too easy. Now, you can always start disabling and restricting things. Like, oh, you can't do XP farms, you can't do masteries, you can't do auxiliaries, stuff like this. But even if you don't do auxiliaries, if you allow paralogs, just allowing paralogs in a normal maddening run, it gets you a lot of extra XP, gets you a lot of extra money, gets you relics, it gets you crazy battalions. I'm just bumping my desk. Uh, it gets you a bunch of crazy things you don't get otherwise. So it's just like tons of free upside. So just paralogs kind of breaks the game. Um, like if you were to go out of your way to not do any mastery grinding at all, if you just allow saint statues and paralogs, you can easily beat maddening if you know what you're doing. So there, you have to kind of like really restrict some of the systems in the game. So skip only kind of solves a lot of that. It limits money. It limits the professor aspect of the game. It removes monastery. It removes auxiliaries and paralogs. It removes seminar. Uh, it forces rest, which is fine. Uh, you have to auto instruct. You don't make that much money or any money at, like in time skip aside from drops. So you have to make sure you get all the chests. You have to make sure you steal all the things, kill all the enemies with drops on them. You have to really go out of your way to min max every little aspect of your characters to unit plan from like the beginning. Uh, you have to find crazy strategies and come up with creative ways to solve the problems that the game presents. So that's really the, the primary motivation. Now, should you do it yourself? Um, if you're gonna do a skip only run <laughs> and you're not like super comfortable with maddening, I don't recommend it. If you're really, if you've beaten the game on maddening a few times, you can try it. Now, I, w I don't recommend Blue Lions. Having just having just beaten it, I do not recommend doing a skip only Blue Lions. It's ridiculous. The final chapter took me... Uh, here, let's see how much time I can actually check. All right, so the final mission... All right, so two hours and 40 minutes. Well, let me go to my YouTube. I can add this up for you so you know how much time it took me. It took me over four hours. I'm just trying to get, like, accurate amount. Uh, one hour... 40 minutes. Okay, so like two hours or four hours and 10 minutes, 99 turns to beat the final chapter for Blue Lion skip only. I, I don't recommend that. <laughs> I don't want anyone to, to go through that. <laughs> this is like hell. This map, this, now that I've beaten it, it, it doesn't look as scary, but it's still... It looks so deceptively easy. Oh, you just kill these enemies. It's like, no, this map will fuck you up, son. This is no joke. This map will destroy you. This map will fuck you up. You think like you have to do everything perfectly up until this point. Like, look at these units. I managed to get death blow, strength plus two, hit plus 20 on two wyverns. I managed to get strength plus two, death blow, darting blow. Getting her to D plus axes was not easy to do. You don't get to do direct tutoring at all in a skip only run. It auto instructs. You have to hope that that happens. Like it's literally like a randomness. And then, you know, she got she got this, which blows my mind. She got white tome fair, that's so sick, dude. Um, I, I even got, look at D plus on Axe, I got into Brigand on this, I got Death Blow, I got into Assassin, I had a 40% chance to test into Assassin. I save scummed until I got into it. This is the type of stuff you need to do to beat this. You have to train Axes on units, like you have to use Axes in combat on units that have no Axe combat arts in early game. You have to smack things with Axes when you can to get mastery towards it. You have to use Broken Axes when doing a lot of these like grinds and farms and stuff like this. Like this, you can watch my videos for like as a guide for how to like do mainline mission farms because I found farms on like every single mission like XP farms, class mastery farms. It's almost mandatory on a skip only run because like in a skip only run you never get to do monastery, you never get saint statues, you get uh, blacksmithing after time skip. The only smithing stones you get are from your group tasks, which end after time skip because you can set them up before time skip when you are allowed to instruct when it's not forced and or, or when skip is, isn't allowed or like you can't skip yet uh, so you can you can set up your group tasks then 
So like you, you set up two units. I set these dudes up on flyer at one point. Um, and then I did a rest and I changed their group tasks to like horses, which technically violates the rules of the run because I didn't skip. I just rest. I didn't instruct though. I just changed the group tasks. I still would have gotten the smithing stones and money. The only thing that changed is for like three chapters, Ash trained horses with someone. I never set them up in time skip. So very difficult type of run. Um, especially for blue lions, blue lions, like some of the units aren't that good. Like Ingrid without strength boosters, she's still decent. You put her in Paladin, it fixes her strength. And she'll still do okay damage and she still makes a good evasion tank. Um, and you have to steal this evasion ring. You have to, you have to become thief as professor or fa similar sword fast unit, which in this house is literally just professor. And you have to steal that shit from Archie on when he teleports in. So you have to intentionally not attack one of the six enemies that spawns in on a map with two repeating spawns and steal from him and then kill him afterwards. That's how you get an evasion ring. This shit is not easy. Everything needs to be carefully thought of and planned. The only units you don't really have to think too much about are like Mercedes, Annette, and Flane. You just throw them on tomes and get them into Grimmery and you're, they're fine. But you have to plan so much stuff. You even have to train Dimitri on horses to some degree to get him on Paladin. He only he was a paladin for every map except for this one. Now I, I, I put him on Great Lord for the better stats, uh, and that was a sacrifice because now he loses Kanto and I have to fight on this fucking map without Kanto and that shit was annoying. Like I, I think I have a pretty high tolerance for, for being like pissed off, triggered, annoyed, tilted. Like I'll play games of Overwatch ranked where my team is raging out and I don't care at all, and we'll lose and I'll say good game and I literally won't be upset. Or like my team will be raging, oh, the heals suck or whatever. Like I'll be on a healer and I just won't respond. I just won't care. So like I usually have a pretty good tolerance for getting tilted. This map tilted the fuck out. <laughs> this Dude, this map, I've, I've been getting up early every day, like 4.30, just, to, just as like a thing to do. And that doesn't bother me at all. I do daily workouts and then I have two gym days and then I do like a run a week and all this stuff. I have like all these things. I do like art training every day. Uh, for in like ZBrush and Substance Painter and Substance Designer, I've been doing tutorials. So I, I've, I've been I've been getting like pretty regimented with everything, pretty disciplined. This map tilted the fuck out of me. This shit is no joke. This shit will fuck you up, son. <laughs> this shit will this will ruin your night. <laughs> this map on a skip only run, this map will destroy you. This map is hard. Even if you know what to do, it's still hard. Even if you copy every single thing I did and maybe even improve it slightly, it'll still be very hard if you tr if you do a true skip only run. So like this final map, I would recommend against doing blue lines. Now, if you want the challenge, if you want to experience the pain and you're up for it, go for it. But just be aware that if you don't perfect these, like if you don't min max all these units, you're going to get fucked up. <laughs> and now also you do have my whole series as a guide so you can just be like oh what did you do this chapter oh okay how did you f uh, xp and mastery farm this chapter oh okay so you have all that information i had to come up with a lot of that information like the manuel the dual chapter one manuela hanneman farm that shit's annoying to set up dude hanneman can crit you uh so many things can go wrong in chapter one but I was able to pull it off and I'm like farming both of them simultaneously for mastery and XP. The prologue thing where you get plus five HP by sitting in the bushes. That, I'm pretty sure I'm the only person who's even thought to do that. Maybe some other people that are crazy about maddening and would like really want to min max. But you usually don't need to do that. Uh, but hitting both the unit, hitting two lords, level two, you know, I consider Bile the Lord. Level two plus five health by chapter one. It makes chapter one much easier. And getting to level two, now the best the best I've ever done on prologue is Byleth level three, Lord level two, both plus five health at the end of the prologue. It's achievable, it's hard to do. You basically have to um, kill a bunch of shit before Gerald does, and it's possible, but just barely. It's like barely possible. You have to like, you have to stop feeding, like as soon as one thing hits level two that's not going for three, you just stop giving it combat, and then you just have the other thing kill everything else. And it's like barely achievable, but yeah, there's like some crazy, and then like chapter two, uh, there's there's an enemy priest with renewal. You can equip broken weapons; it just keeps healing itself as long as you don't kill it. 
you can keep smacking it infinitely for mastery. Everyone gets plus five health. Um, yeah. And then by the end of chapter one, you could have two level fives, potentially, at least one. If you have two, then you can get them strength plus two. So you get two, like there's all these little incremental things that if you don't do them early, add up. So like you have to test into, you have to save scum into Brigand on as many things as humanly possible. Like you'll notice Dimitri has death blow, he has D plus. Look at, look at their ax training. I got them to D plus and then it stops completely. Took them off of it, got rid of all their axes, gave them to someone else. I think Ingrid's is similar, yeah. Maybe Ash? Ash has a little bit excess, um, but yeah, like you can see, it, like you have to you have to know about all this min maxing. You have to know about the builds. I was able to get these both hit plus twenty, which wasn't even planned. But I'm like, I have a few chapters. I might as well make them archers. And then I found some grinds and I got them hit plus twenty. Uh, I, I potentially could have done that on Ash as well. He needs defensive tactics because he gets hit a lot, uh, which helps in this map. That's another thing too, like. Oh yeah, then this turned out to be useless. This didn't work as intended. When your battalion's out, this stops working. So that's something I learned. Unfortunate. So this could be replaced with literally anything. Renewal would be better. Fiendish would be better. Magic would be better. Um, renewal is nice because she gets hit every turn. And just like, yeah, that'd be better. I don't think she has renewal though. So she would just take... She could run defensive tactics. Um... She could also run Fiendish, which is good. She does good damage without Fiendish, so she doesn't need it. But obviously you want it. So there's that. Rally Res maybe could have been okay. What else? Yeah, that's this like this runs crazy. So alright, what what so here's the ones I'd recommend doing for skip only. Probably Golden Deer and maybe Silver Snow. Because Silver Snow you get a ton of units, so you could have at least one or two guard adjutants, which is nice and you could at least have max unit count on each map. So guard adjutants are nice. I have no adjutants in this map. This is all I get. 11 units. That's it. That's all I get. No, no more, no less, no adjutants. I don't, give, I don't get my 12 units. Pretty insane. This is hardest, like this is probably the hardest run. Now, if you can somehow like get Catherine to see, um, see uh, support, and then recruit her at level 12 for the, the third and final skip only, or fourth skip, which I think is in chapter four. So it's achievable. Um, then maybe you have something. Um, yeah. It's it's hard to get these units. There's, there's a chapter where you can skip and it's a forced monastery or a skip. And in a skip only run, you have to skip there. You can easily recruit Catherine in that chapter to make this run much easier. Uh, having that 12th unit would really matter. You also recruit her. I think she's like level 15 minimum. She starts out at a high level. Uh, she starts out with a brave weapon. Insane strength growth. So that would have helped. Having an extra unit would have been nice. But yeah, this map is ridiculous. It's pretty pretty crazy. This map is the only reason I recommend doing a skip only blue lines run. Uh, but I would say Silver Snow wouldn't be that bad. Uh, Crimson Flower, I don't think you could technically do unless you broke the, the skip only rule set and allowed uh, getting to a point where you can protect Edelgard and don't go her route. So maybe. I guess you just have to allow the setting up. I don't know how to do that because I've never done it because I don't like Edelgard. Uh, she started a war. Uh, she thinks that people get to positions based on their crests, but that doesn't seem to be the case in the game and objectively crests are powerful so like to argue that like they don't matter is kind of stupid like oh it should be merit based yes it should be merit based but like if if you know one dude can summon a meteor that levels a city and the other guy can't the guy that can summon a meteor is like insane so <laughs> he's kind of <laughs> there's something about it i don't know you, it's undeniable power like crests are undeniable power so like People that have power are going to do better than people that don't. It's like a fact of life. So her her whole thing, I, I never cared for her story, her ambition, none of it. I always thought she had a weird backstory. It was kind of a strange character. Um, but I guess I could do Crimson Flower. It's only 18 chapters though, so it can't be that hard. Um, and you get some good units too. And you get Raging Storm. Like, I, I don't see how that could be hard at all. 
with all that crap. You get a warp meteor unit. Or no, I'm sorry, this is not a warp. A physic Thoron meteor unit and a warp physic healer. You get two physics. You get, you get Vengeance. You get Petra, who's also a really good unit. Some people sleep on. Um, so yeah, Crimson Flower wouldn't be that bad. Skip only. You just have to set up the Crimson Flower. You do a lot of the breaking of the skip only to set up the Crimson Flower. So if you have to go to Monastery to talk to Edelgard or something at some key point, you would allow that. Um, and then you could just d like decide if you want to do that or not. Like if you want to do the whole Monastery or if you want to just allow that part. Um, now, if you're not uploading this and there's no proof of anything and you're just doing it for yourself, then just do whatever. But if you want to have an interesting maddening challenge, I would say skip only is fun, uh, but anything but blue lines <laughs> should be fine. It'll be it'll be hard. It'll still be hard. Even if you know like some of the map tactics, it'll still be hard. But you just won't have that insane final chapter that just destroys you. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's... All right, I talked about unit building, which route to do. Uh, some So some of the pitfalls, I've done a few. I've done like four rest seminar only runs. I've done Golden Deer twice. The first one failed. The second one was a huge success. And I got like insane units. Uh, I've done a Blue Lions and then I did a Silver Snow. Rest seminar is a good challenge. Uh, because you can rest as needed to re restore your sword, which is useful. The sword of the creator is a great weapon. It does really good damage. Its combat art is good. It has a good crit rate. It very often one-shots things. It's a fantastic weapon, so resting is useful. And you only really seminar, like, mostly in uh, pre-time skip. So when you're in the monastery, when you're, like, academia or a academy phase, I guess we'll call it. You can seminar a lot. And resting really becomes insane when you no longer need to seminar and it doesn't matter because you all like your builds are done you don't really need any masteries and stuff like that then you can just keep resting and just keep resetting your sword um, you still get everyone gets 50 percent motivation from resting so what you do is you rest twice teach one person like so you teach group a rest once they're back to 50 percent. then you teach group b who are now at zero then you rest again now group a is back to 100 you teach them, rest again. Now group B is back to 100, and then you can you can teach them. So you can alternate. So with rest, you get 50% motivation across the board. So you can consistently teach people, like instruct them on their goals at 100% motivation while resting, while resetting your sword. So it can be better than seminaring in some cases, for sure. Uh, seminaring is only really good when you need something Otherwise, I would say resting is better. Like when you when you need to test in and you're like still, like when your builds are done, you don't need seminar at all. It doesn't help you really, unless you're going for like range plus one. Uh, so like one of the big gimmicks, if you have Hanneman, is like he does bows and raisins. So like you just make Annette's goal bows and her bows are terrible. Now I wasn't able to do this in this run, but then she gets reason mastery from seminar and bows, but the bows will never get higher than Hanneman's, assuming he has like, you know, C or something in bows. So there's there's gimmicks to to seminar to get people in. Because if you're if you're if you have a unit who's A tier reason, they can't be taught by anything at the same level or lower. They can only be taught by things higher. But they will still get reason XP if they're being taught for bows. So there's like little gimmicks like that. Uh, there's a lot of little gimmicks. Overall I would say rest and seminar runs are very fun. Uh, you might get soft blocked. If that happens, you have to just be like, fuck it and move on. And like if you for sure are soft blocked, like I thought I was soft blocked here, but I was able to beat it. So it might just be a mindset thing. But if your units are fucked up, like if you don't have death blow and like, you know, like look at this, look at this unit. This is pretty good. Death blow, strength plus two, axe prowess five, hit plus 20. This dude is hit plus 40 with axes. And then he's also HP plus five. This is a good unit. If he didn't have death blow and hit plus 20, he'd probably be fucked up. So like if you have units that aren't there and you didn't you didn't plan them well, you can get soft blocked really easily in a run like this. So consider that. <laughs> so make sure you do your unit planning. 
basically you can do a plan like this. You want Gremories and you want Utilities and you want Flyers. Um, some units, like for example, if you want to use Lorenz, you can make him a Dark Knight, that's fine. He's not gonna make, he can't become a Gremory. So like Males, Lindhart, he stays on Bishop, whatever. You know, but it's pretty straightforward. Like look at this team. It's all Kanto units and Flyers. Uh, this is a forced assassin slash enlightened one. I made him not a paladin just because it, it helped with the final fight. And it did. It actually did. It did help with the final fight. It was one of the many decisions that pushed this team over the edge to being able to beat this map. I beat this map on 99 turns. And not because I took my time. Let that sink in for this. This, this, this type of shit is insane. So, and maybe you're way better than me at Fire Emblem. Um, like maybe there's some things I'm not aware of, like how to get Catherine in a skip only thing early, uh, stuff like that. If that's the case, then go for it. Go for blue lines. Or if you think you're about at my skill level, go for it. Uh, if you're at my skill level or better than me, I'd say go for it. There's no, re there's definitely some psychos and not, I don't mean that as an insult. There's some people that are like insane Fire Emblem players who do crazy shit. So if you're one of those... You shouldn't be scared by this, uh, but be warned. <laughs> so that's it for this one. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, I think only, what is it, like 20% of people are subbed that watch my stuff, which is actually pretty good. Some people have like low, lower subscription rates, but definitely subscribe. It helps. Definitely like the video. It also helps. And like, it literally helps the algorithm. The algorithm will look at it like, oh, people are engaging with this. And then commenting also helps as well. Um, like it all, essentially the more engagement a video has, the more YouTube thinks people enjoy it or want to see it or whatever. So that's really the whole thing. That's why I always mention it. But yeah, thanks for checking this out. Give it a try. Give Skip Only a try. I would start with Golden Deer. That's probably the safest. Probably the easiest overall. Um, chapter 13 on Golden Deer isn't that bad because Claude is a default flyer and... He can just fly over the walls and you can make some of the units that you start that like come to the right as soon as like you know your other team starts spawning in you can make them flyers and put impregnable wall on dudes and shit and it's crazy so you can get some pretty good units um with golden deer pretty easily i would recommend getting impregnable wall on like ignats and making him a wyvern and that'll save you a lot of pain <laughs> make everyone a flyer that can be a flyer. And if they can't, make them a horse. And if they can't be a horse and they're a mage, make them a gremory. And if they can't be that, make them a bishop. That's like the general advice I would say. You need mobility. So yeah, that's it for this one. Peace.